once again gathered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Anticipating God to do something great here. Amen. Touch us by the word of the Lord. We're here to study the word of the Lord. I like to use the term potter's wheel for tonight uh, because we get into the word of the Lord and and we learn, amen, and get closer to him, be reminded. Even if sometimes we already know some things, we need to be reminded of things. Amen. amen. Praise God. I would remind you, I say it quite often, but uh, Jesus is coming. Yes, sir. And we need to be persevering and staying close to him. <clears throat> Praise God. As we get started here this evening, I want to remind uh, the men uh, that this, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, Friday and Saturday is men's conference, and uh, we've been looking forward to that, and so, uh, amen, be prayerful, we want the men to be strengthened, be built up, we've got quite a few men going and uh, I'm thankful to the Lord for that. Yes. And I enjoy going to men's conference and hearing the good preaching. And uh, also the fellowship. Yes. The fellowship is just really uh, tremendous. All the guys get together and, and it's just a godly time. And I'm appreciative to the Lord for that. But anyway, keep that in your mind, in your heart, and uh, be praying about it. Praying for the men that go to receive. <clears throat> Pray for the speakers. Amen. Those that's going to be yeah. speaking, that God will know them and, and uh, use his ministry uh, to touch his people. Praise God. We do want to go to the Lord in prayer right now. Uh, Matthew Ratliff, John's son, uh, has uh, been congested, and uh, him and Emily both. May very well be allergy stuff going around while that going around this time of year. But anyway, if you want to stand with me uh, as we get into the service, we're going to pray for Matthew and Emily too, and uh, ask the Lord to touch these and any others that are sick. And we do want to remember Ruth Cooper. Sister Cooper was not able to get out and. We just want to keep lifting her up to the Lord in prayer. Sister Peggy Ramon is another one. Amen. Some of these older ones, the Krennics, and uh, just lift them up to the Lord. Don't forget Jean Daniels. Uh, these older ones, it's, sometimes it's not very easy for them to, to get out. Amen. And uh, some of them just physically are unable to do it. And That's so right. we want to lift these up. Don't forget these because you don't see them all the time right. we need to remember them amen praise god so let's pray amen ask the lord to bless the service tonight as well as touch these lives praise god lord jesus once again we are here lord in your name and god almighty we believe that you are in this place with us right now and you're still god you're on the throne you're here, and we acknowledge you right now. We, will, we want to approach you with faith. Great God, believe that you are and that you're a rewarder. Then to diligently seek you. Your word says that. Lord God Almighty, would you, Lord, these that are sick, we bind together, Lord. We ask you to touch Matthew, and we ask you to touch Emily. God, this evening, would you, Lord, lay your hand upon them, Jesus and healed him, God. My Lord, because we pray in the name of Jesus, my Lord, because you paid the price at Calvary, by your stripes we were healed, and we're complete in you, Lord. You paid it all, Lord, by your shed blood, and you gave us your name to pray in it. We ask you to, to do these great things because we trust in you. We trust in your name. And Lord, we ask you to touch our elders, Pray, God, Sister Cooper, uh, Sister Peggy Ramon, Jean Daniels, and the Krennic family. 
Pray, God, all of these and your people, Lord God, those that are here tonight as well as those that are, God, tuning in by way of Facebook or whatever means they are listening to the service this evening. We ask you to touch lives. Oh, Jesus, do a work in us by your word, Lord, tonight, by your spirit. Great God, we ask you to anoint your ministry tonight in this place as well as abroad, every place where men are calling on your name and the truth, God. And touch our young people as well. And Lord, may you be exalted in everything for your worthy, Lord. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. God bless you. You can be seated. We're going to ask Brother Dingman to come this evening. He's going to minister the word of the Lord to us. I appreciate Brother Dingman and his family. Love him very much. Amen. And thank Amen. you for his ministry. Amen. 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 Everybody say, God bless Brother Dingman. Lord bless Brother Dingman. Amen. Well, good evening. Praise the Lord. It's uh, been a while since I've been up here. Feels like it anyway. So, um, so we don't have kind of limited time. Um, if you want to, it'd be awesome. I'm going to disregard what I was about to say. <laughs> See this thing. So, um, so my message was preached already. I had a pastor come in from brother from New Mexico and Brother Brixner. So uh, he preached this message already, kind of, but he did a better job than probably what I'll do tonight. So the um, Lord put this on my heart a while back. And uh, um, so I'm going to just open up the scriptures. I hope you forgive me. I kind of have a bet. I don't talk very well, I'm talking circles. And um, sometimes my reading is bad too, so I pray you'll look over past that and uh, you'll hear what's being said. And maybe I can do something for you tonight and myself, and we can all hear and grow together. And so, my two main scriptures I want to look at is Isaiah 44 and 6. And then uh, put your thumb in 2 Corinthians. Verse 4. Isaiah 44 and 6 and 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. So, second, or Isaiah 44 and 6 says this Thus saith the Lord, King of Israel, mm -hmm. and his Redeemer. The Lord of hosts. I am the first. I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Yeah. Emphasis on that first phrase. Emphasis on that first phrase. Is that he said thus saith the Lord. The king of Israel. Mm -hmm. I want to flip over to 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. My emphasis on that script on that verse is that in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Father, I, I need your help tonight. I pray, Father, you grant me an anointing. I pray you help me with my speech. And Father, help me most important to say what you won't say in Jesus' name. And give us ears to hear and uh, hearts to receive and lighten our understanding tonight. So, that, Father, we can grow in the knowledge and in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, help those who are listening by way of Facebook. Once again, uh, I'd like to lift up Matthew Ratliff in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Tell of two kings. 
So I've been doing this year, I've been, my Bible reading, I've been trying to do something different this year. Um, and it kind of opens my eyes a little bit. You know, there's only two books in the Bible that has 31 chapters in it. And um, so I figure, and it's 1 Samuel and Proverbs. Okay. So I started at the beginning of the year thinking, well, I'm going to go through the year each day of the month for chapter. And so, and you'd be amazed how Proverbs somehow, you lay Proverbs on top of. First Samuel, sometimes it's kind of hard to, you got to read Samuel first and then Proverbs. I, I do anyway, because then you get the, you get the full message, I guess, what, what's happening. But if you lay Proverbs right on top of First Samuel, it's, it's intriguing how, how uh, those two writers, so many generations apart had the same mindset and so so I want to talk about two kings ultimately there's only and has always been two kings it started out with one king okay I just want to read a few scriptures to set the foundation <coughs> excuse me Isaiah 40 and 25 to them to whom then will ye liken me? Or shall I be equal? Saith the Holy One. Isaiah 43 and 15. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Okay, now a lot of these scriptures, what I read, you'll see in your Bible, it's a, it's a, it's a capital, okay? Behind that word Lord is the Hebrew word. His name, the proper name of, of the king of Israel, of God. And it's the Hebrew, yod heh vav um, And it's Yahweh. So um, I will probably interchange those throughout my time of speaking. So when I say the Lord or say Yahweh, it's because I love the name. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we know that Yahweh became Jesus. Mm -hmm. He became flesh. The body of Jesus Christ, or in Hebrew, would be Yeshua, mm -hmm. and um, revealed Himself in bodily form to us. Mm -hmm. So, let me re reread uh, 43 and 15. He says, I am Yahweh, mm -hmm. your Holy One, right. the Creator of Israel, your King. Now that can have two, two different implications, okay? Okay, there's the carnal Israel, fleshly Israel, the line from, from Abraham all the way down to the day. And then there's Israel, the seed of the seed of Abraham, that one seed, you know, that what those who are those who you see who the, the seed is, Paul explains that in his writings, that the seed of those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, those who are born again. Okay, so you have a, you have, just like uh, you have uh, Jacob and Esau, you have Israel and Israel, but you have the worldly Israel, the man, and you have this, the spirit, the spirit man. And so, um, and the younger shall rule over the elder, right? Okay, so, and in uh, 44 and 6, Isaiah 44 and 6, that saith the Lord, the king of Israel, and his redeemer, Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there's no God. Yeah. And then uh, second, second Corinthians 4 and 4, we read this already, but I want to, I want to set this foundation I want to talk about. And whom the God of this world had blinded the eyes of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, right. who shine unto them. Should shine unto them. Mm -hmm. John 1 49, Nathaniel answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Thou art the King of Israel. King of Israel. John 12 and 13. <clears throat> they took branches and palm trees mm -hmm. 
and went forth to meet him right. and cried they okay these the, the person we heard about Nathaniel is mm -hmm. a disciple yeah now we're th talking about the people the citizens of Israel of Jerusalem right. at that time okay mm -hmm. they got it these people got it okay right. it was the Pharisees and Sadducees and the doctors of law who didn't get it the scribes right. they didn't get it or they did get it but they didn't want the Messiah that they were getting. Yeah. So they said they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hoshenu, in Hebrew it is Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel mm -hmm. that comes in the name of the Lord. Yes, yes. Yeah, I like that one. Beginning way back, okay, so way back in the, in the at Genesis Three. And we'll start. We'll go. I'll go backwards a little bit. Genesis one through two, we had a king. It started out one king. Okay, and that was we have established that 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 was Yahweh, Elohim, creator. He he hovered over the face of the deep. He created everything, and he created Israel. Okay, as we read. Okay, so and then he made us. He made us a palace. He made us a world, and he set us a palace right in the middle of this huge safari with all these great exotic critters, okay? And then he made us, and he set us right inside that palace, okay? And he made us prime ministers over this entire creation. So, um, and we got to enjoy for some time this this uh, utopia, if, we, if you will. Mm -hmm. This, uh, we were given charge over this, this palace and over this global backyard, if you will, global safari, um, all sorts of critters, and um, huge and tiny dinosaurs, yeah. and all the way down to beetles or even skeeters. I don't even know why he made skeeters, but, but. Um, Anyway, so so we had this time, this span of time until another king showed up. Okay, another king showed up, and and in Genesis three it talks about how how he attacked and invaded our yard. He invaded our kingdom, and uh, he approached Eve. Way back in the beginning, another king, the God of this world, which hath blinded the eyes of them which believe not. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, another king which through trickery usurped the kingdom of this world. And since then, he demands absolute loyalty and worship, mm -hmm. and or endure. His merciless wrath. It's two things. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we'll stop at nothing to achieve only what only his creator, Yahweh, also known as Jesus, is worth worthy of. So Satan, the devil, mm -hmm. is cast down to this world. Mm -hmm. He walks into our our backyard, our, our safari, comes into our palace, and we hand over, with not even an argument. You look, read the scripture, and through trickery, through subtlety, like smooth, okay? Mm -hmm. We didn't even, there, was, there wasn't even a fight. We just handed over our kingdom, okay? We handed, we handed everything over to him, mm -hmm. over, over a uh, disobedience. Okay, and Paul, the scripture says, uh, sin of Adam. It was his disobedience. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of people like to blame it on the woman, which, yeah, okay. But the scripture calls it, doesn't call it the sin of Eve. calls it the sin of Adam. Okay, Adam, well, it was his responsibility yeah. to make sure mm -hmm. that things in the palace and in the, uh, the rest of the world was taken care of. And he was even given that charge before, before uh, 
when you put him in, he said, take care of it. Okay? So, um, in the beginning, man had a king. His name was Yahweh. Okay? So, uh, in John 15, 5 and 19, then answered Jesus, said to them, Very, verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. What he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Okay? John 3 and 13, And no man hath ascended into heaven. I lost my place. Okay. Ascended up into heaven, but he that come down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Um, this is an indicator to me, he said, which is in heaven. So at one time, we as as the prime ministers of this world, I like to use the word prime minister, just, you know, because we, at first, before we fell, we have authority over everything. Mm -hmm. We had everything, you know, the Father, he gave us charge over everything we made to, to control and to raise and handle. And so there is something that Adam and Eve got to enjoy that we don't get to enjoy today. They got to see the presence because their eyes were unfettered. There was some sin to block that, that that they had. They got to see, and so they got to have. And what I say, what I what I see here in the scripture, that the Son of Man, the second Adam, he got to see because he was unfettered by sin. He says, "I do what I see the Father do." So he came in the flesh and he says, and he says in John 3 and 13, it says, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So Son of Man was in heaven while he was on his earth because he was God in the flesh. Yeah. He got he could see, that's why he could say, I do what I see the Father do, because he could see. We couldn't see. Because he was able to see the presence of the Lord coming, you know, even though he was the the embodiment of the, 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 the God of heaven, the creator of the universe, he could see what his father, with his, with his human eyes, because his eyes were not tainted with sin like us. So, the, um, there's always been a king, and, and Yahweh will always be king, and there's nothing we can do to change that. You know, there's, he's also, I'm going to, I'm jumping ahead of myself, he, he is also, from the very beginning, he has planned a way. He knew what he was doing. Oh, yeah. He knew what he was doing when he made Lucifer. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly what was going to happen when he made Lucifer. Um, just like he knew exactly what he was doing when he chose Judas. Mm -hmm. He knew, he knew he was cho choosing a traitor. He always knew he was making a traitor. When he made Halal Ben Shahar, Satan. Okay, um, but but when he did that, he had already had a formula. He already formulated a plan way down in the future to be able to to make a way back to the king. Like it's been said in this church several times, the Father does. He can make us serve him if he wants to. It, don't, it would not take much at all for our Elohim, our creator, to say, you will worship me. Mm -hmm. And and it wouldn't take much. All he has to do is, he, he, he can do anything he wants, and we would we would say uncle. Yeah. Everybody would say uncle. Yeah. And say, yeah, and be worshiped. But forced worship is a whole lot different than offered worship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Forced love is a lot different than given love. You know, you, you look at some of these people around here, a lot of people buying people's love. And then all of a sudden the money runs out, then all of a sudden families fall apart because you can't buy love anymore. Right. The real love wasn't there. Right. Okay? Right. So, right. so what happened is that in Genesis 3, and since Gen from Genesis 3 all the way to Revelation chapter 20 and 15, we see that man rejected our king. Man's been rejecting the king of all creation 
for a king of their own. A new king had attacked our kingdom, and we, without even an argument, handed over the kingdom to a new king. They were weary being like his people. There are a lot of Christians give up what they're doing because it's not fun anymore. They come out of the world, or maybe they, they're brought up on a pew, so to speak, and they realize they grow up, and they look to their left and look to the right, and all of a sudden they start seeing and say, hey, this ain't as fun. It's not as fun being a Christian. And they start getting their eyes off of what they have, and they start desiring something different. They want to be like the nations. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy God. And Yahweh hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Okay. Peter and Paul reapplied these in the New Testament. Okay. He, he, they, you know, Paul talked about it in Titus. And Peter talked about it. He said, we are being, we are set apart. That word holy means you've taken something and you've removed it from what it is and you set it apart. You're different now. You're no longer now part of it. When, when uh, on the, during a Passover or a time when they make a, or during Sabbath in a Hebrew family, you know, Jewish family, they'll make this, it's called challah, okay? Um, during the making of this challah, that one whole loaf, the, the, the wife or who's making the hala, before it's done, they'll break off a piece of that hala. It's separated. And that's called, it's, that's called making it holy. You're separating that piece. That piece is now no longer part of the loaf. It's a whole different piece. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's what's happening with the Father. We were made of one loaf one and so and then then the whole the whole loaf fell the whole loaf became full of leaven corruption okay so the father when we become born again he takes that and he separates that from the loaf we're no longer part of that loaf okay so so and then being a set apart and a peculiar people had become too peculiar to them what about me? What about you? Okay? Is being a Christian too peculiar? Is being a Christian too, uh, being a, a peculiar person, is it, is it getting tired? You know, that, you know, the, uh, that revelation of one, you know, how we start looking in the mirror, start looking in and say, and we and start raising up a different king. Maybe raising up, you know, there's, there's only one king. There can only be one king. Mm -hmm. Okay? The world is fun. I mean, there's a lot, the whole world, there's probably a lot more things that you can do outside in the world than you can in the church. I think if a lot of these Christians got real busy doing what the Father does, they'll you know, find out how much more fun it is being a Christian than it is beyond the world. Because um, cause if you listen to testimony of my friends over in Kenya or other places where, where faith is actually operated, they live in faith almost on a daily basis. They say faith is something, and you, you start seeing you know things that happen in the book of Acts are happening over there because there's faith, real faith, because they it's, it's part of their life. Over here, it's real difficult to come by faith. You know, since I started coming to this church here in Belton, Texas, you know, I found it pre pretty, pretty um, peculiar and interesting how the, you know, we, you know, the pastor will call people up for prayer. And then, uh, and then he'll ask them or others, if you don't have faith, don't come pray. Don't come up here. You know, if you don't have any faith, don't come, don't come. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not doing you any good. You're just going to come up, get greasy, and go back to the seat. Mm -hmm. 
That's all that's going to happen. Okay? So, but if you come up with faith, things can happen. Okay? Right. So, in Galatians chapter 6 and 12, as many as desire to make their a fair show in their flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Indicating that there are people who wanted to be Christians in Galatia. And when Paul was talking about that, they want to be Christians. But persecution was too heavy for them. So they hid behind circumcision and flesh. Jesus said, you deny me before men. I'll deny you before the Father. And, uh, and uh, the other brother just the other day said, you put your hand, or with the John Ratliff, one or two, he said, if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, you're not worthy of the kingdom. Okay? So we will have a king. That's just the way we are. We will have a king. Something or someone will rule over us. It's just the way it is. It's in our nature. We're going to have someone ruling over us. We, and like I said, I alluded to Bre Pastor Brixner out of New Mexico. He preached a message called Revelation of One. He said either Jesus will be king or somebody else will be king. Either us or ultimately Satan is, will be king because we'll do what he does. He wants us to do. But, but there, there can only be one. And if Jesus is not made king every single day, then, then there's, not, there's, there's more than one. And like uh, the pastor always says, if you know more than one king, you know too many, you, you know more than the king knows. Okay? I mean, uh, speaking, of, speaking of God, if you know more, more, than God, more than one God, then you know more than he knows. Israel had a king. Okay? They started out from the from the time it from the time that God called Abraham out of Ur until Samuel the seer. They had a king. Every from the time they came, he called Abraham. Every one of those, uh, excuse me, Yahweh raised up men who would begin restoring the, the, the and redeeming redeeming his kingdom to himself. From Adam to Abraham to Samuel, the Lord made men who would listen. And heed his instructions. Okay? Yes. The English definition of the Hebrew word for instruction is Torah. Or Torah, meaning in the plural, teachings or instructions. So Abraham, so he, Yahweh was king. He would tell, he told Abraham what to do. Abraham got, got out. You don't see in the scriptures that he questioned any of the orders of the king. All the way down through the time, all the way down to Samuel, even Samuel. You know, you never see Samuel questioning, you know, the orders of the king. Okay? You, you kind of, I guess you can say, you kind of, well, well, Saul will kill me. But then but I, don't, I don't think I don't think he was questioning the father at the time. I think he was more worried about. It. But then in uh, Samuel 8 and 5, <coughs> excuse me. And, uh, and and said unto them, Behold, thou art old. Now what's happening is up to this point, Israel had judges, okay? Moses had died, Joshua had died, and now they roll into judges, okay? And I and so if you look at Samuel, Samuel's kind of like a continuation of the last judge, okay? Okay, so at this point, they kept going into because of their disobedience, they kept going into this. Uh, he kept, uh, Yahweh kept selling them into this slavery, into this punishment, into exile, and they, and they kept going. And you know, you would think after a while they would have learned, you know. But you know, it seems like every a judge would die off, and then all of a sudden they're right back to what they were used to do. You doing, and the father would send the Philistines in, or send in the Amalekites, or. Or send in somebody to take over and oppress them, okay? And so, so now here we are. Sam, but Samuel is on the scene, and now the Israelites are complaining. They're about to go to fight the Philistines, okay? They're in, in, and so now they're saying, 
Uh, Behold, thou art old, and your sons walk not in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like the nations. Mm -hmm. They already had a king. He never failed them. You look at it, start with Moses. You I mean, you see, it's even Abraham, but most, you see it more with Moses that the, all the way through. That our king was always there, ne right in time, the nick of time, always on time. And, yeah. and no, he's, he was always successful. He's never failed them. Right. But now, they want a worldly king because mm -hmm. they can't see their king. Mm. They're not allowed to have an image that might be their king. They learned that with Moses. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now they look to the left and the right and they say, oh, they got kings. Make us a king like they do. They like the nations. Yeah. Because for whatever reason, they like the world. And then in verse 7, it says, and Yahweh said to Samuel, that broke Samuel's heart. Mm -hmm. Just how you know. Samuel, it broke his heart because he knew that that broke the father's heart. Yeah. Right. Okay. Samuel was in this union with the father. And because, and then, but, right. you know, that broke the father's heart. He said, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say to thee, for they have not rejected thee. But they have rejected me, mm -hmm. that I should not reign over them. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We will have a king. Mm -hmm. We will have a king. Somebody will rule over us. Mm -hmm. We there. There's that void. Ever since we fell, there's that hole in every human being. And everybody's trying to plug that hole with everything but the person who can plug it. Right. And so anytime we're, even, even apostolic Christians, when you get your eyes off the king, mm -hmm. when you start looking at other things to the left and to the right, you're now starting to stuff that hole. You're rejecting a king. Mm hmm you're rejecting a king. You're rejecting his his leadership. You're rejecting what he wants mm -hmm. from us. Yeah. There's only one king. Yes. In 19, verse, verse 19, Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. They said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, yeah. that we may also be like all the nations. Right. Too many Christians trying to be like this world. Way too many Christians trying to, because they have nice wardrobes or to them, or they got nice cars, or they make all this money, or whatever is causing apostolics, Christians, to move or drift away, and either to the left or to the right. Something's attracting us to, because it's prettier than the kingdom, mm -hmm. and so so we're we're one to be like them, and that tries to creep into the church. Mm -hmm. You see, you see saints try to bring that to the church, mm -hmm. and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Do they not know who they was fighting our battles before them? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, all these years since Moses, if you will. I mean, you look back over here, and they have these documents. They have this, Moses all the way to Samuel. They have the document. They can go right to the tabernacle, right where Samuel grew up, and they can pick up those documents and read it and see all these battles that the Father went before them and fought for them. You never lost a fight. Amen. It's a tale of two kings. Either Jesus will be our king, or the God of this world will be our king. Right, right. Mm. We'll either pledge our allegiance to one king, 
or the other. Yes. There's a Hebrew teaching that goes like this. Ma'asei Avot. Simon Lavanim. Meaning the deeds of the fathers are assigned to the sons. It means that Moses means that Moses wrote stories about the patriarchs, not only to tell us about the patriarchs and those who preached them or preceded them, but to tell us what would happen to the descendants of those patriarchs, the nation of Israel in the future. So everything that happens in the Bible, that's why Paul calls them types of shadows. What happens in the Bible shows us what's going to happen in the future. It's a parable of what's happening. So when, a when, when uh, Abraham first went to Egypt, went down to Egypt, that was a sign to the sons that the, his children go back down to Egypt. And like he came out of Egypt, it's the same way his sons are going to come out of Egypt. Okay? So, so, so what's what, what you read in the scriptures, you can literally read the gospel of Jesus Christ all the way through the Torah. That's, that's how the apostles were able to turn the whole world upside down with the Old Testament, because they didn't have a New Testament. Because they were able to see the gospel. They were, their understanding was enlightened. They were able from Genesis to, to the, through the whole Old Testament, they were able to read the gospel and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so King Saul and David were just one of those signs to the sons, which is us. King Saul, I like to, and what I've seen is like Saul, I think the father raised Saul up. I have another message I'm, I'm building right now called, will the, real, will the real giant please stand up? Kind of pre, uh, preview. Anyway, but uh but I see King Saul, the father knew what King Saul was going to do. He was not taken by surprise when Saul did what he did. The father knew who he wanted king. But he raised up Saul for a certain purpose. Again, the deeds of the fathers is a sign of the sons. So, so I see, the, the, if you read Samuel and how Saul is, he's kind of like, Saul treated David kind of like what Lucifer is doing to the church. The king, the god of this world, is doing to the church. The earthly, worldly king, King Saul, okay, was doing to the spiritual king, King David, okay? So it's, 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 it's just a, a very, very uh, interesting, synony synonymous, what happened. Yahweh knew what he was doing when he made um, Satan, and put him in, in his place. He also knew very well what he do, what he was doing when he chose to put Judah uh, Scariot in his place. Jesus never at any time was distraught or surprised. Thus he knew exactly what he was doing when he chose his Hebrew name is Shaul ben Kish. Okay? Shaul ben Kish. The name Shaul means ask for, pray for, and the name Kish, it means Saul, son of Kish, okay? And Kish means bent or strained, okay, crooked. David ben Yesi, or David ben Jesse, son of Jesse. Now, David means the beloved. And Jesse means I possess. Okay, you asked, this is the father speaking, you asked, or you, Shaul, for a king, like unto the nations that are bent and crooked, Kish. But I, Yahweh, says, possess Jesse, the beloved, David, king who is after my own heart. Okay? So he knew what he was doing when he, when he chose Saul. He knew he was crooked from the beginning. But his heart was already set on somebody else, the beloved. But I see it as, you know, Samuel, um, 1 Samuel 15 and 17, and Samuel said, When thou wast little, in thine own sight, wast thou not made 
the head of the tribes of Israel. And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And this is talking to Saul. Saul, he, he got in, he's, he, be, he became arrogant. He became self-sufficient. He didn't need the prophet anymore. He didn't need his pastor. Okay, he didn't need to listen to the man of God in his life anymore. So in Samuel 15 and 35, and Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and and Yahweh repented that he had made King Saul over Israel. So, so just because just because you reject your pastor or the man of God in your life, don't mean he will reject you. But I'm just here's so. But they, Saul couldn't be ministered anymore. He had hardened his heart. He had decided he, he's going to do what he wants to do. Okay. And he proved that through scripture. The world of King Saul hates the righteous King David and anyone who is friends with him. Friends with David. Mm -hmm. Samuel 20, 32, 33, and said, Jonathan, and Jonathan answered his father and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined that his father his father of his father's slave David, to slay David. The worldly king Satan is always seeking ways to draw out the tabernacle, the church. Mm -hmm. The worldly king Saul or, the, or Satan is always trying to kill and destroy the king Jesus. Yeah. So, as we saw, Pharaoh tried to ki kill Moses or, or the, the, the Messiah their first Messiah of Israel by killing all the boys. But Moses got saved. And we see, you know, Herod tried to kill the Messiah <laughs> by killing all the boys two years and under. But the Messiah was preserved. Right. Here again, Saul knew Saul knew, and he, and, he, and he knew what was happening. Satan knew what was going to happen. So if he could kill David, he kills the Messiah. Because, like, you know, you know, the scripture says that Levi paid taxes to Melchizedek in, Hebrew, in the big book of Hebrews. Well, Levi wasn't born then. Well, he was in the bosom of his father, Abraham. So the writer of Hebrews likens that Levi, because he was in the bosom of Abraham, paid tithe under Melchizedek. Okay? So Saul knew, or the devil knew, that if, if he could get Saul to kill David, he'll stop the Messiah that was pro proclaimed to come, Jesus. Because Jesus was in the lineage of David. First Samuel 20, 31. Now listen to this. For as long as the son of Jesse lives upon the ground, thou shalt not be established. That's what Satan is saying to us, and to our carnal selves. Nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now sin and fetch him now to me, for he shall surely die. Mm. Satan wants to kill Jesus in our lives. Mm. If he can kill Jesus in our lives, then he has us. Yeah. Okay? But the real king, yeah. King Yeshua, yeah. Jesus, 1 Samuel 13 and 14, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. Samuel's talking to uh, uh, Shaul, or King Saul. <clears throat> Yahweh hath sought, hath sought him a man after his own heart. And Yahweh hath commanded him to be captain over his people. Amen. Okay, you remember um, Paul was talking. Paul was talking about a seed, right? And it sounds like very similar to what Paul was teaching. Who, who the seed was? He, he didn't say seeds. He said the seed. Okay, and then all the way down, that blessing kept going from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it just kept going down, right? And so, but that seed was Jesus Christ. Paul expressed, explained that, okay? So now, this man, okay, 
Father has sought him out instead of, you know, the seed. He sought out a man. Okay? I think that's synonymous. I mean, it's my opinion. But when Jesus, when, when Samuel said that, I think the man that he was talking about was not David. Where, but even though David was the one he was interested in, but they think the man we're talking about is the man Christ Jesus, the man Jesus Christ, because he was of the lineage of David. And Satan was trying his difficult, their hardest, to destroy this, because he knew that the Messiah would be the end of him. Samuel 7, 8, and 12. Now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep, sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Right. Amen. Thy seed, his kingdom. Who is this man, this seed, and who and who's this king? Luke answers this in Acts chapter 13, 22 to 23. When he had removed Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse. Remember what that phrase means. You know, the beloved I possess. A man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Yes, amen. It's a tale of two kings. Halal bin Shahar, or we know as Lucifer, or Satan, or Yeshua bin Yahweh, Jesus Christ, son of Yahweh. One of the two. Can't be any other. Yeah. We will have a king. Who is my king? Who is your king? Isaiah 43, 11, 15. I, even I, am Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior. Right. Now I'm going to tell you, Strong's covered this up. Strong's, if you look at Strong's in the in, in, in the book, he, he this name is Messiah. You look behind that word Savior in Isaiah. Every offer, every time in Isaiah, I looked it up myself. I studied it. It says Mashiach or Mashiach. But Strong's puts a word called Yasha. Yod starts with a Yod, not a man. Yasha is not Mashiach, but he had he but later, and if you look in the Strongs in the book, he has a definition for Mashiach. Why did he put Yasha on top of Mashiach? Because he knew Strongs. He was a high in, individual in his Christian organization. He saw something through his studies that if he had exposed it. He probably would have lost his prominence. Could you imagine what would happen to the Trinitarian doctrine if they said if they saw that the the same Isaiah forty three read like this? He said, "I even I am Yahweh. Beside me there is no Christ." That would completely mess up their theology because they had their they wanted a king. They wanted their king. They wanted a king like everybody else. And they want you to have a king like everybody else. Mm -hmm. The nations. Yeah. Yahweh has called a nation of people. He says, I am Yahweh, verse 15, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. We will have a king. Amen. Either it'll be Jesus, who is Yahweh, the Old Testament, or it'll be Halal ben Shahar, or Satan. Mm -hmm. 
who rules this world, mm -hmm. the God of this world. And Isaiah 44 and 6, thus says Yahweh, the King of Israel, his Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. That revelation of one. Yes, man. You cannot have any other God. You cannot have, and if you have another God, you have two kings mm -hmm. or more than one king. Yeah. Yeah. Man wouldn't have him. Man rejected Yahweh as king way back with Samuel. And today he's still rejecting him as king. Yes. John 1 49. Nathanael answered, said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. The devout Israelites knew who Jesus was. They knew he was the king. Mm -hmm. John 12, 12 to 13. On the, day, on the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees of palm trees, and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that come to the name of the Lord. The common people knew who the king was. Yeah. John 19, 19, and 21 through 22. Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And wrote, the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Yeah. Then said the chief priest of the, Jew, and of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. <laughs> Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Pilate knew who Jesus was. Revelation 15 and 3. And they sing the song of Moses and the servant of God. Amen. And the song of the Lord uh, of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. That would have been Yahweh Elohim in the Hebrew. Just as the true, just and true are thy ways, thou King of Saints. Amen. The saints know who Jesus is. He is king of the saints, the born again. Yeah. Revelation 19 and 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name, I keep messing myself up here, and on his thigh a king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. Yes. He will not share lordship. That's right. He's not, he'll not make himself lord over us. We must submit to him as Lord. Mm -hmm. He's not, he can. He could force it. But you, he can be king, but he won't be Lord if we don't make him Lord. Mm -hmm. That means we've got to make him Lord every day. Yes. We will have a king. Yes. Jesus or someone else. That's right. There is but one true king. He'll not share the throne with any of us. Mm -hmm. We must abdicate our thrones and lordships totally over Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That revelation of one. He'll not tolerate insubordination. Mm -hmm. Okay? Any king. Mm -hmm. You read that scripture. Any king, even today, will not tolerate insubordination. Luke 19, 27. But those, mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Mm -hmm. We will have a king. Yeah. Who is my king? Amen. And who is your king? Yes. Who is my Lord? And who is your Lord? Mm -hmm. If he cannot be my Lord, he must certainly, can, he most certainly cannot and will not be my king. If he can't be your Lord, he won't be your king. Mm -hmm. It's written, Deuteronomy 3, 4, 35. I don't think I put that in there. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that Yahweh, he is God. And there is none beside him. In Isaiah 45, 5 through 6, I am Yahweh. There is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee. Thou, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west 
that there is none beside me. I am Yahweh. There is none else. He'll not share the throne. Right. He'll not share the throne with myself or with anyone else. Mm -hmm. I can't be on my throne. I can't be my own king. I can't be my own Lord. He'll not share lordship with myself or anybody else. Mm -hmm. Then, Yahweh was king. Then he became Yahoshua. Mm -hmm. Yahweh became Hoshua. Or Hoshea. There's a whole book called Hosea. Hoshea. Means our salvation. Yahoshua Mashiach. Providing us the privilege of making him absolute king again. God. Through John 3 and 3, 3 through 8. Being in Acts chapter 2 and 38. Those who have not made him king. You can make him king. Yes. Yet still man still rejects him. That word Yah means Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Hoshea. And so if you read... Uh, you read Acts 2.38 in a mindset of, of uh, the Hebrew, he says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yeshua, Yehoshua, Mashiach, Yahweh, our Savior, the Messiah. So when you get that name proclaimed over you in baptism, you get in the name of the creator of the universe placed upon you, right. that king. And when the Father says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Mm -hmm. When you have the name of the Lord on your on you, yeah. and you do not allow him to be king, mm -hmm. you're tarnishing that name. Mm -hmm. Now that's the Jewish understanding mm -hmm. of that commandment. Okay? Taking the name of the Lord in vain is nothing is not just making a cuss word out of his name. Taking the name of the Lord in vain is making it common or making it nothing or tarnishing the name. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, back in the day, it used to be a big thing if sons, you hear right here in America, when sons, you know, um, embarrass their fathers because there's a name. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Proverbs, it says, and it talks a lot about a good name is better than mountains of gold and silver. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when the kids would tarnish that name, you know, parents would, would move those kids out. Because now the people are going to look at him, that those, those parents, because a kid did it, they're a the representation of them. Mm -hmm. They can't have that because that's a tarnishing the name. Okay? And so, so when we're born again, we print that name on us. We print the name Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Jesus is on us through baptism. We volunteer. We make him Lord and King. When he stops being King, we are tarnishing the name. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we wear that name wherever we go, it's on us. We wear that name into a bar. We're taking the name in the bar. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're uh, people see. You know, uh, perception is reality for most people. You know, I used to, um, I think I've said it before, but um, when I was a young teenager, just before I went into the Marine Corps, um, I was in Kissimmee, Florida, getting ready to transition into the Marine Corps, and I, I, was, I had a job. I, I would walk to this job to and back where, from where I live, it's probably several miles. Well, on the way in between, on the street, there was this palm reader shop, and I had always wanted i always wanted to find me one of those little tiny Bibles right here. And I've always wanted to go in one of those places. And I've always wanted to say, I want my palm read. And let them do their little thing, whatever it is. And I said, I want to try. Let me try reading the palm. And I wanted to say, here, I got your future if you don't repent in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. And there's a palm reader shop right there. I kept, one, I kept walking by it. And I almost walked in. And as soon as I, my foot went that way, the father says, somebody's going to see you walking in there. Or walking out. 
And it doesn't matter what you just did in there. All they see is that the saint or the king just walked in or out of the palm of your shop. Perception, the reality. That would have tarnished his name. So I had made these little business cards. It said Jesus Christ. And a little in the corners. I forget the <laughs> Acts 2. And on the back had all the Acts 2, 38, John 3, um, 3 through 8, and different things. It looked like a business card from Jesus. And so I stuck it on the front door and left. Well, on my way back to work that next day, the place was boarded up and had burned down. So I'm, I'm anyway, so, so I'm not saying I had any help with that, but I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's about who's king, who is our king. And if Jesus is our king, he will also be our Lord and he'll be able to tell us, you can go there or you can't, or right. you can buy that or you can't buy that, or, or he's Lord. It has to be every day. We have to wake up every day and determine that you're Lord today, not me. You're, you're king. You're my king. And I mean, he gets to tell us what to do. And that means he gets to tell, I mean, just like the Revelation 1, I mean, he's got commandments for us Christians to do. He's got jobs for us to do. Yeah. Even though we're not pastors, you know, he's got jobs for every Christian for us to do. Mm -hmm. And if any Christians is, if any Christian is, not understanding of anything to do, there's one overwhelming commandment that he's given. He says, go and make disciples. Clear as crystal. Every, every gospel talks about preaching of the gospel, making Christians yes. in some form. So every Christian has a task. Right. So you have a task at your job, at your school, whether you're at the grocery store, on your leisure time, people got to see that you are a king's kid. I'm a king's kid. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and when they don't see that you're a king's kid, you got to ask yourself, uh, are you tarnishing the name? Mm -hmm. Is he king? Who's your king that day? Mm -hmm. We will have a king. Either it's going to be Jesus Christ, yes, or it's going to be Hello Ben Shahar, Satan. One of the two. There's only one in between. We will have a king. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Demon. Amen. Amen. I, I thought of several scriptures while he was uh, ministering there. Amen. I thought about the conflict spoken of all the way back in the book of Genesis. Amen. Genesis 3, 15, I think it is. Where they said the, the serpent would bruise the heel, and the, and the, but the ultimate the woman's seed would bruise the serpent's head. And I thought about that whenever he was talking about the conflict throughout the scriptures. And there's definitely a conflict. Amen. This going on with saints, and if you think for a second. Uh, that you are no longer a servant. I'd encourage you to read Romans 6. You know, we're free from being servants of sin. Right. But we haven't quit being servants. Right. We become servants to righteousness. Yeah. And the end of that is everlasting life. Amen. Praise God. I want to serve Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I served that other one for a long time in my life. And all he did was destroy me. He wrecked havoc in my life. Amen. Destroyed me. And I was placing myself into his hands. That's simply because I didn't realize that there was something better. Amen. Right. And uh, Jesus, I want to say I found him, but the truth is he found me. Uh, he wasn't lost. I was. <laughs> Amen. But I'm glad, and uh, you know, I'm glad to be a servant of the Lord. Amen. That's not talking about just behind this pulpit. That's just one more thing to do. But we're, we all, when we're Christians, we've got to have the understanding that we are servants of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, sir. Amen. We used to be in the kingdom of darkness. 
but through the blood of Jesus we've been brought into the kingdom of God. Amen. And a kingdom has a king in it. Yes, sir. Huh? Every kingdom has a king. Amen. And if we are in the kingdom of God, Jesus is our king and we are his servants. Amen. I really enjoy that, Brother Damon. I glean on those scriptures. Uh, I love those scriptures of Isaiah. Those are so powerful scriptures. The one he started off with, Isaiah 44, 6. Yeah. I love that one. People should really dig into that one. And that one speaks so clearly of Jesus being Yahweh. Yeah. Amen. I, the God of the Old Testament. Okay. He is the King of Israel. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, you know, Israel, as he mentioned, I believe it was in Romans, where he mentioned that, you know, everything that, that is Israel is not Israel. Right. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. So, I'm glad to be in the church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. I'm glad to be blood-bought by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And have his spirit in my life. Have his name upon my life. Yeah. I definitely do not want to take the name of the Lord in vain. I want to live, walk honorably, and uh, exalt that name. Not exalt myself. Mm -hmm. Exalt that name. Exalt him. And uh, show forth the praises of him that's brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Right. Praise God. He wants us to do that. Amen. Thank you so very much, Brother Dean. I enjoyed that very much. God bless you. Let's stand. We're going to let Jeremiah dismiss us in a word of prayer. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this word that you've given us tonight, Lord. We ask that you help us to put you first in everything that we do, Lord, and show our thanksgiving to you each and every day. And ask for your help and know that you'll be with us yes, along Lord. the way and help us fight our battles for us, Lord. And you are our true king, Lord, and we thank you for all that you've done for each and every one of us. Yes, Lord. We ask that you go with us as we go our separate ways today. Amen. Love one another, you're dead.